Hello, and welcome to my YouTube channel. Please ensure to like, share, and subscribe. And also click the bell notification in the top right hand corner to be made aware anytime I upload tutorials or videos to YouTube. Alright, let's craft together. Hey guys, so on my patio because I'm going to do some painting today. So I'm going to be decorating this wine uh, little decanter set that I ordered from the Stainless Depot. And the set actually comes in white or stainless steel. And I ordered this white. And so it comes with both the little glasses and then the wine decanter itself. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to be spray painting these black and then I'm going to be decorating them with some gold designs. So it's going to be gold paint and some gold um, vinyl that I'm going to be placing on here. So this set actually comes with two straws to go with your glasses. <coughs> and it has the little removable lid and you can drink and open and close the little top there. And I got this set for like $18 from, again, the Stainless Depot is where I ordered it from. And they are really quick with shipping. So shipping doesn't take a super long time. I think I ordered it this week and it was delivered the same week or not this one, but when I've ordered from them before. Okay, so what I'm going to do again, I'm going to be spray painting these black. So I'm going to start out with the actual wine decanter and I'm just going to take the lid off and I am going to be seeing if I can place this in here where I can get it where it doesn't move and that way I can hold it and paint it, spray paint it and I'm going to put just a little bit, I want it to be able to hang on here. I'm going to put a little bit of tape on here just to protect the top lid part because I don't want to spray paint that part. And hopefully you guys can hear me okay out here on my patio. So I'm just going to put a little bit of tape around that top lid and also hopefully this tape will help to hold this top one here. But I just want to get it to where when I, I can hold it like this to spray paint it. So I'm going to be spray painting the bottom and everything else black. And I'm also going to be spray painting both glasses black. And then I'm going to be decorating them out. So. <clears throat> Go ahead and remove the lids from these. Now I'm just going to place these face down and then I'm just going to spray paint them laying face down. But this one, um, I probably could have let, let it stay face down too, but it's kind of windy out here so the wind may blow it. So that's why I'm going to spray paint this one first. And I'm holding it like this. So I'm going to get in a position where I can start spraying. All right, so my camera stopped because I needed to free up some space. But as I was saying, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to spray paint this black. You may not see me on camera as much because I'm going to be kind of down some, but I will show you the finished project or product here. And I'm using the Rust-Oleum. Um, this is black semi-gloss and or gloss, and it's the two times Rust-Oleum. And so I'm just going to give it a nice coat of black because I don't want to use the white. And you probably would say, well, why didn't you order them in black? And again, they only come in white or stainless steel. So I'm going to go ahead and do the wine glass first or the decanter first. And give it a good shake. And I'm going to go ahead and start spraying. Okay. 
just a nice little coat. All right, I think I did pretty good. And it's just that quick to spray paint it. And I'm just making sure I didn't miss any areas. And you don't wanna spray it too thick because you don't want it to kind of like bubble up. So I put a little bit too much there, but once I put everything on it, it'll be just fine. And you don't want to be too close either, but I think it looks good. All right. So I have a little box sitting over here that I'm just going to sit this on. Hopefully that doesn't fall. And I'm just gonna take these and that way I don't have to put my hands on them. But I'm gonna lay them flat down. So you won't be able to see. So I'm put them in my lap and then spray paint these two. And I don't want them to end up touching one another. You know what? Hold on. I'm going to do these a different way. I'm going to go ahead and I wasn't going to do it this way. I think I am. I didn't want to accidentally spray paint my little ball here. I think I'm going to do it this way. I'll just do one with you so you can see it and then I'll pause and I'll do the other. But again, I'm going to go lightly and I'm twirling as I'm turning. That way I can try to get the coverage without doubling up. All right, so that's the wine glass. And again, I'm gonna give it a minute to dry and then I'll put the other one on. But I'm gonna pause and when I come back, I will have spray painted everything and allowed it to dry, but I just wanted to give you a visual of that part. All right, guys, I gave it about 20 minutes for all of my uh, both my glasses and the decanter itself to dry. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to be adding um, this Rust-Oleum metallic finish, which is kind of like a gold um, color here. I'm going to be adding that to the bottom part of the, the bottom part of the wine glass. But what I'm going to be using is this Dawn Power Wash. I'm going to spray from about the middle to the uh, top portion, the lip portion of the wine glass. And then after I spray it with the power wash, I'm going to spray paint the bottom and then I'm going to rinse it off with water so you can see the effects of using the power wash um, to protect the top part um, of the wine glass. So I'm going to put this on the top part and I'm going to try to get it as even as possible. <laughs> and then I'm going to spray paint it with gold on the bottom. So, just so you guys can see. And I'm gonna have to work really, really fast here. I wasted the water, so the water kind of got on my bottom one here. So I'm gonna wipe this water off. But I spray, I spray painted this one with it just um, laying flat like that. Um, so you can do it either or. You can do it on your, you know, um, stick like that you would use for your spinner. 
or you can just lay it flat down and just walk around and spray paint it, which is what I did here. I got some water on there. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do again is I'm just gonna spray from about the middle all the way around and get the lip part. And then I'm going to use this gold spray paint and I'm gonna spray around the bottom and on the bottom. And then I'm gonna take some water and wash off the Dawn Power Wash so you can see what the after effects are gonna be. So I'm gonna move kind of fast here. Hopefully that's my goal and not make a mess. <clears throat> so I saw this lady do this on YouTube. I don't remember her name, but she had a water hose and I don't have a water hose. So I gotta make the best of <laughs> what I got, okay? All right, so let me just make sure I get it up here. All right, so we're just going around the middle and then down. Okay, just like that. And then I'm going to spray paint it with the gold. All right. And now I'm going to rinse it off with water. All right, so I'm gonna hold it up so you guys can see. So you can see how we have the spray paint around the bottom and then all of that is just going to rinse off. So let me see if you can see it. And you can do this process as many times as you like. I think I'm gonna do it one more time because I think I wanted a little bit more silver on the bottom. So I'm probably gonna hit it one more time. And then I'm going to spray paint it. All right, I think my top got covered in paint. And again, I'm gonna hit it with the water. All right, so this is what it's looking like so far. And I'm not liking it. It's like the silver, I mean, the gold color is like running down, but I think it's pretty. <laughs> I didn't think I would like it, but I think it's pretty. Just take a look. I think it's gonna turn out fine. Let's see. All right, so. I can't lift this because it's wet. So I'm gonna pause this, give it a second to dry, and then I'm gonna come back and do the next one. All right, so I got both of the glasses drying. I'm gonna now go in and I wanna put the power wash on the bottom and on the bottom and then the top and then the center part is where I'm going to put the gold. So I'm trying to get my hands dry. So just making sure that I did get good coverage on the black. So it's good and dry. So again, I'm going to hit the blind decanter glass with the power wash on the bottom. I mean, on the top part here and then around the bottom. And then I'm gonna 
spray paint this part with the silver, I mean with the gold. Make sure I got enough water. All right, so here I go. I work fast. All right, then I'm going to hit it with the water. So you can see what the wine decanter is looking like. I'm going to have to hit it with the water just a little bit more. And I think I'm going to make it a little bit more gold around there. So I'm probably going to do it one more time. All right, I'm going to pause and I'll be right back. All right, so I have the decanter and also the wine glasses now spray painted. And I kind of like how the gold kind of drizzled down just a little bit because um, it kind of gave it like this speckly look around the black. So it's not just solid black um, all around. And I kind of like that. So hopefully you can kind of see that. And what I'm gonna be doing now is I'm gonna have to wait on this one. But the um because that one's not completely dry yet. But the other two are dry. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this um Rust-Oleum semi-gloss clear and I'm just gonna spray it um onto the glasses and the also the wine decanter just to kind of give it that glossy shot um glossy look but I am going to be applying epoxy to these, okay? But I am going to go ahead and hit both of these with a little semi-gloss just so that I don't have to worry about the epoxy kind of chipping away at the paint. So here we go. And I'm off camera, but I am just taking this and spraying both of the glasses. I'm gonna have to wait on the, like I said, I'm gonna have to wait on the um the wine decanter because it's not completely dry yet. So it still feels, let's see. No, it has a little side over here that still feels a little bit damp. Um, one of the things I will say, I don't know if my gold was pretty full, so it I guess I haven't used it in a while, but I did notice that the part where it sprays from was getting clogged. So as I was trying to spray it, it was getting clogged and I wasn't able to, you know, hit it with the water and the power wash as quickly as I wanted to. So I will tell you to kind of have something, if you decide to do this process, kind of have something, um, a paper towel, some water, something so that you can kind of clear this part right here, because it was getting clogged with the gold as I was spraying. And when it gets clogged, then you, you can't spray it, okay? And you need to be able to do this process quickly. So I didn't get as much of the rigged or rigged, rugged look that I would have liked to get around this that part. 
Um, but I'm not going to try it again because I tried it twice and both times it did its own thing. It had a mind of, of its own and it was just the gold. The black didn't do that. And so far the clear hasn't done that. So but this is to kind of give it like a shine after you have done all the stuff that you've done to it. And so I'm gonna let these dry for about a good 20 minutes. And then I'll put the, um, I'll show you with me putting the decals on it and hitting it with the epoxy. Now, um, this video is gonna be a little bit lengthy. So I will pause it in between what I'm doing. I'll explain it to you, let you see me start the process, but epoxy takes 24 hours, 12 to 24 hours to cure. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to allow it to, um, I hate I messed up my nails. I got that paint on my nails. So hot about that. Um, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna allow the epoxy to start to cure. I'll give it about maybe six hours and then I'll hit it with another coat of epoxy and then I'll let it finish curing. But when I'm doing, since I only have one spinner right now, um, I have to do each thing separately. So um, I might end up showing you the decanter, the wine decanter with me putting the decal and the epoxy and then show you the finished product at the end because otherwise it will take forever because I have three things that has to go under epoxy. Um, but this is the Rust-Oleum semi-gloss clear and um, it's the two times cover. So this is just to kind of give it back that shine um, after you've taken it through the power wash and I have um, put together my wine decanter set, which was a white um, wine decanter set that I ordered from the Stainless Depot. And then I followed this young lady's tutorial on YouTube um, to put my decanter together. Um, and then I kind of went off on my own thing because many reasons. All right. But what I wanted to show you is today is going to be the first time that I use my spinner that I showed you guys online um, in another tutorial on how I use it. And I just wanted to tell you, I'm going to start it to spin it here so you can see. Um, but I had to actually use like some paper towels to wrap around um, the hole that the part that comes out and goes into the canister, the wine decanter, I said canister, the wine decanter. So I had to kind of put some paper towels around it to thicken it up so that my decanter would slide up on it and then spin on its own like it's supposed to. So if you um, purchase this spinner, I know some people said they were going to order it. If you purchase this spinner and you decide to do a decanter, wine decanter, then make sure you get something to thicken up this, the part that goes inside of the wine decanter. Otherwise, it's not going to fit on there and it's not going to rotate on its own. Um, also, if it's not fit properly, it'll kind of spin and then it'll kind of, you know, even if it goes, it'll kind of lump. And you don't want any sudden jerks when you're dealing with epoxy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to mix some epoxy together. Um, and since I'm only dealing with this small amount, I'm not going to mask up because I'm going to let it do its thing um, and I'm not going to be in here. But what I'm going to do is go ahead and mix this epoxy. Now, everyone that has been watching me for a while probably knows that I use Amazing um, Clearcast. Everybody has their preferences on what they use. I get this at Hobby Lobby. Hobby Lobby, I've always found, is the cheapest. It's $23.99. And it is the large size. Let's see, what are the ounces here? Um, blah, 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 blah. 16. So this is 16 ounces for $23.99. Now, it always says that it's on sale. Um, but every time I go there, I mean, for years, it's always been $23.99. If you were to go to Michael's, it's going to cost you almost 30 bucks. So you know, for those of you that just want to go in store and pick up some epoxy. Um, so what you do with epoxy is you're going to mix part A and part B equal parts. And then I'm going to pour it into this little red cup here. And then I'm going to use my glove, glove 
to kind of uh, pour it on, I mean, to smooth it on, and then I'll just let it run. And then I'm going to show you the glasses. Give me one second. I'm tacky today, so don't talk about me. But these are the glasses. Um, I did his and hers on there, and I think they're going to be super pretty. So you can see they're all decked out with that same black and metallic color. Um, to do these, I did use the um, Rust-Oleum metallic and then the Rust-Oleum black gloss and gloss. And then this is just um, textured premium metallic vinyl um, that I used, which is this, which I got at Michael's. It came with three different colors. Um, I think it was like on sale for like $7.99, something like that. But that's what this is. And um, I also did a decal. As you can see here, as it comes around, there is a decal there that I'm going to put some words in the middle after I do my first coat of epoxy. Um, you can see where I have went in and cleaned up the rim because I did get a little bit of the black paint on there. And I actually cleaned that up. So it's going to be a his and her, his and hers, his and hers, <laughs> his and her set, um, his and hers set um, that I'm going to be putting together. And then I'm going to think about in the meantime, while it's spinning, what I want to put in the center of this design here. So hopefully you guys can see that as it goes around. So I'm going to put something in the middle there. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and mix this and get it started just so you can see. So again, I'm going to be mixing equal parts of epoxy. So I'm going to do, um, what is this? I'm going to do 30. Well, I don't think it'll take that much. I'm going to do 15 and 15. I think that'll be more than I know. Okay, so that's 15. And this is part A. And I'm really about out. So I'm going to have to grab some more because I have to do my glasses as well. So I have the little plastic cup to actually measure it out. And I may have to go ahead and put my, um, my mask on because it stinks. All right, so I'm going to be doing 30 all together. It's 15 of A and 15 of B. And I'm going to mix these two together. One second. Can't take it. Can't take the smell. Sorry. So hopefully you guys will still be able to hear me pretty good. But I'm going to mix A and B together. And then I'm going to pour it on here. And I got my glove somewhere. Might have dropped it. Um, but I'm going to get a glove. There it is. I'm going to use my glove to smooth it on. And then I'm just going to let this spin for maybe about six hours or so. And then I'm going to put, I'm going to give it time to get like a little bit of um, dryness to it. And then I'm going to apply my words. So <clears throat> I can't take, I can't take that smell. It's killing me. All right, so hopefully you guys can still hear me okay. I'm going to try to bring this volume up just to make sure that you guys can hear me just fine. Sorry, 
All right. <clears throat> so I'm going to go ahead and mix these two together. And I kind of wasted it a little bit. I have to clean that up in just a minute. I kind of waste a little bit <clears throat> trying to work fast. But you want to make sure you want to make sure you get all of the epoxy out. So I'm making sure that I scrape the container. And then I'm going to stir it to mix it together. All right. So I'm going to give this a stir, guys. I'm going to give this a stir so that I can uh, get it all mixed up here. And I think this is CC's. Uh, okay, it looks like 15 ounces, no, 15 CC's each, 15 of A and 15 of B which is 30 cc's all together is how much I'm using for this decanter. You don't need a whole lot because I'm going to be doing epoxy twice on this decanter. This is just to give it its first coat. And then after it dries, I'm going to put the words in the center of this decal frame that's on there. And then I'll put the second layer of epoxy so epoxy takes about 24 hours to truly cure. And so it's a lengthy process. It's not something that you could start this process and be done, you know, just like that. So you have to really work at it. And you do want to make sure that it is that it is um really, really stirred up really good. Just wanted to bring this in here and kind of wipe, wipe this off because I'll be smelling it. And then I'll grab <clears throat> Some cleaner here in a bit to finish cleaning that off. All right, hold on one second. All right, that glove didn't feel right. <laughs> So, 
I'd rather have one that fits a little bit closer to my hand. And this one feels like I've used it before, but not for epoxy. There we go. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this epoxy. And make sure you have make sure you have something on the bottom so that as the epoxy drips, that it will drip onto this and instead of messing up your your spinner. So I just have some cardstock here and I'll just move this out of the way once it's done. I may even put a piece of aluminum foil on it. All right, we're going to get ready to start pouring here. I think I'm going to stop it just for a second and that way I can pour better. There we go. Trying to get it started. <clears throat> Sure, I'm not mowing to nobody.
All right. So I kind of feel like I have it all over the canister besides here on the bottom. All right, so I have just a tiny bit left in here. So I'm going to finish pouring the remaining uh, portion of this and smoothing it on, making sure that I get the neck part really good. And let me get the other top. Hold on one second. <laughs> All right, so I'm just gonna take a little bit of the epoxy and put it on the top. So not a lot, just enough to give it the shine from the epoxy. All right. All right. So I think I got enough coverage. Uh, again, I use 15 of A and 15 of B, 15 cc's of A and 15 cc's of B, 30 cc's all total of the amazing clear cast. And that was more than enough to cover the entire decanter. And then I just took my finger and put a little bit on the lid 
itself. And And that's it, guys. I'll be trashing that along with the rest of this and cleaning my hands up. But I'm going to let this spin for a, a few hours. I'm going to let it spin uh, until it's dry enough that I can go ahead and put the words inside the frame part. And then after I get the words on, inside the frame part, then I'll put another coat of epoxy. And then I will be going in to also epoxy the matching glasses as well. Now, one of the things I do want to point out is that you can, guys, <clears throat> you can actually um, wait to put the words in the vinyl. You can wait to put the words on after you do the first coat of epoxy. That's totally up to you. Um, if you want to make sure that you don't peel any of the paint off. Um, I did use the clear um, gloss on top of the black and the gold paint. I did put the clear um, gloss on there to try to prevent that. But I did have a little peeling and then I had to just kind of use a little bit of acrylic paint to kind of fill it in. Um, but it looks absolutely beautiful with this epoxy on there you can see it spinning freely without any clumps or sudden moves in the spinner because the spin the spinner is actually made more for your cups and your mugs and things like that and your tumblers um, where you can actually put the football inside so you have to make sure that you cover this with something in order for it to fit on there nice and smoothly Hey guys, I'm back. I am getting ready to put epoxy on um, one of the glasses. I have 20 cc's of epoxy mixed here. I've already stirred it up and all that good stuff because by now you see me walk through the process of how I mixed it with the um, decanter, the wine decanter. So um, I'll show you guys the wine decanter. I've only did one layer of epoxy on the wine decanter. I won't get that to the second one until tomorrow. But I'm going to go ahead and start the process on the glasses. So at least I can feel like I got something accomplished today. <clears throat> so um, just so you guys know, it's always great. It's always highly recommended that you work with epoxy in an area that... Um, has some type of ventilation. So I have a window right here and this window is open and that's why earlier I was saying I need to work fast. Number one is the smell. Number two is because it's cold outside and epoxy takes longer to cure in cold weather. Um, but I needed that coldness to help with the smell. So that's why I had the window open. I didn't, did not mention it earlier in the earlier video, but if you want to work with epoxy, especially the epoxy that I'm using, the amazing clear cast, then you want to make sure that you um, that you are doing it in a properly insulated area. Okay, so here's my epoxy. I've mixed it. Again, I have 10 of A and 10 of B. With the wine decanter, I use 30 cc's of epoxy. I'm only using 20, which may still be too much for this little small. I probably could have got away with 10, but we're going to see how it goes. One of the things that you don't want to do is you don't want to have a lot of epoxy because the more epoxy you have, if it's too much, the purpose of this is so that it can self-level. That's why you want it to spin as it's curing because you want it to self-level and not end up with, you know, epoxy just sitting in blotches um, where you can actually see like clunks of epoxy 
or where it's thick on one side, thin on another side. So that's the purpose of your spinner. With that being said, you only want to use a certain amount of epoxy because you don't want it just dripping, okay? I mean, that's product that you're losing. So you only want to get enough on there to where you can coat it properly, okay? But not where you have so much that you have to throw the rest over because unless you have something else to use the epoxy for, you're just wasting product and product is money, okay? And time is money, okay? All right, so I have, um, again... Uh -huh my same little um, cardstock stuff that I was using earlier laying down here so that it can catch the epoxy if any drips. And I have very little dripping from the wine decanter. So we're gonna see if we can keep up those spirits. Um, if I had two spinners, then I could actually do both of these at the same time. The only reason I haven't purchased a spinner that has more than one is because I do have a six cup tumbler or a spinner that I made myself, but I don't have room for it here. Um, and that's why I don't want to invest in one because I have one. So I just needed something that's small and compact for right now until I move. And then I'll bring back out my six cup um, tumbler. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and start pouring here. And hopefully you guys can see the sun. And I'm going to pour. And then I'm going to use my finger to kind of get it to go in here. And so the purpose is to get this all over your glass as much as possible. And you can actually feel where there is no epoxy, guys. You can tell the difference. It's going to feel real, real, real um, smooth and, you know, glossy-like and look real glossy-like wherever you have the epoxy. Wherever there is no epoxy, it's going to feel dry. And I will say that this cup tumbler, for the most part, it's pretty quiet. Like, I don't even know that it's on. I mean, I know it's on because I turned it on, but I don't hear any noise from it spinning. All right, so like I said, I could have gotten away, in this situation, I could have gotten away with less than 20 cc's um, because you can see I still have half of this left. So really 20 cc's would have taken care of both of these. Um, I'm still going to put a little bit more on here because I do want a nice um, thick coating of it. But I will probably only put coat these one time instead of two because I'm not going to, I already have a decal on there, so there's no need for me to put anything else on here. <clears throat> if you were going to, let's say if you were going to add glitter, this would be the time, you know, if you didn't do it with the previous one, you know, um, or if you didn't put it on that before you added the epoxy, this would be the time that you could put on glitter and then add a second layer of epoxy.
and you want to make sure that you kind of get like that lip part of your um, tumbler or your glass and you want to make sure that you get the bottom. Oh, it is so pretty. All right. What I will say, guys, um, like I said, epoxy is a lengthy process. It's not something that I can start unless I only have one thing that I'm actually using epoxy on, it's not something that you can start and an hour later you're done. Yeah, allow, an hour later you may be done, but it still needs to cure uh, when you're finished with your, you know, applying the epoxy. You do need to um, allow it to cure properly. And so you don't really want to, um, you know, rush the process or put your hands on it and try to take it off before it's actually, you know, completed getting somewhat dry. So what I will do is I will allow this to dry a bit and then I will start on the last the last one which is the hers. So that's why mine takes so long. If you have a multi-cup tumbler or turner thinner you may hear it called all kinds of names, guys. But if you have a multi-cup turner, then you can have more than one tumbler or cup on it, and it actually speeds up the process because this one could be curing, and then I could be working on this one, okay? Um, it doesn't, you don't want to do something, if you're new to this idea and this concept of using epoxy, you do not want to just take the epoxy and pour it on and leave it upside down like this because epoxy, again, is self-leveling, okay? So it will run down and attempt to self-level, but what's going to happen is at the bottom, you're going to have all that epoxy that's going to um, just come down the cup and end up at the bottom here, and you don't want that, okay? Because once that epoxy gets hard, you don't want to be trying to chisel that away, and then you mess up this part. Plus, you may not be able to get it up off of whatever you put it on. So it's always best, and you can't sit it down like this until it's dry because, again, it's going to stick. It's like glue. You know, it's going to stick to whatever you sit it on. So it is highly recommended that you're using a cup turner, tumbler, spinner, however you want to refer to it. It is highly recommended that you use one of these to get the job done. Now I'm going to go and grab my wine decanter just so you can see the stage uh, and what it looks like right now. I have not put the words in the middle just yet. I'm going to do that tomorrow, but at least I can show you what it looks like currently. my hand on that guys okay so this is the wine i can't touch it with this other hand this is the wine decanter and you guys can see that gloss on there which comes from the epoxy now this has been curing for maybe about four hours so i'm able to touch it but i still want to be kind of careful i don't want to drop it or anything like that um but give you guys just a close-up there 
So I'm going to be putting words in the middle. So I actually have this to complete curing because it can't self, it's already self level. There's no more leveling of it to do. So I just have it on the lip upside down and I can finish the process. So I just wanted to come on and just show you how I am going in and doing the cup. And I will do the same process on the other cup and then I won't come back um, until I'm done and I show you guys the finished project. Hey guys, I am back to finalize this project that I have been showing to you. And as you can see, I'm in a different outfit. So I've had several wardrobe changes. That's just to let you know how lengthy this process is. Um, but I have finished the um, the wine decanter set. And so here is the his. And it has its epoxy on there. That's why it's all nice and shiny. And here is the hers. And again, it's all epoxied. So that's the his and hers. I did put a little bit of glitter on the hers. You can see the difference. At the bottom, you can see the glitter shining. And I want to put glitter on the his. And it's two coats of epoxy. So um, I did the decals before I put on any epoxy. You can put the epoxy and then put the decals. But I did decals first, then I epoxy, then I added um, the glitter on this one, and then I epoxied again. Okay, so it's two um, coats of epoxy. And then this is the wine decanter. And I just put Black Love in the middle. Um, this vinyl is premium textured metallic vinyl. I got this from Michaels. I think it was like three different colors and it was like $7. Um, but again, I put this part, as you saw, I put this part on, then I did the epoxy, and then I put this on, the Black Love and the same vinyl, and then I epoxied it again, okay? So the top, the lid is also uh, epoxy. That's where I just took my finger and rubbed some on, but it is completely done. So this is the complete set. It would be the his and hers, the his and hers with the Black Love wine decanter, okay? Again, I got this set from the Stainless Depot. It was like $18 and it comes with two straws, okay? So um, the other thing I want to tell you, I want to give you guys some pointers in it, just in case you decide to do this project. Number one, I used, I kept calling this gold, but it's metallic. <laughs> okay, so this is the uh, Rust-Oleum metallic finish. This is what I used on the bottom. The bottom here, that's the metallic, okay? And then it has that sparkly look because I put some gold glitter on it. And then I used this oleum um, gloss, black. Okay? That is the top part of the uh, glasses. And then I also used this Rust-Oleum Semi-Gloss Clear. So after I got the metallic and the black on and it was all nice and dry, then I gave it a, a color, a coating of the clear. And that's to help with your paint peeling when you put your um, vinyl on and then you have to lift up that transfer tape. This is to try to help with that. Now what you can do is you can put this on and then just go straight to epoxy. And then after the first coat of epoxy, you can then apply your decal after it dries, apply your decal, then put on your second layer of epoxy and you're done, okay? I actually did, on my wine decanter, I put down that little frame first. And when I went to lift the transfer tape, it did peel up some of the black uh, paint and so I took some acrylic paint and went in and filled it in, but you can't even tell. And I'm going to give you a close-up. You can't even tell where I went in, okay? 
So, um, you know, I liked the project overall, but I do, like I said, I'm going to give you some pointers. So one is make sure um, if you do this project that you do it outside, okay? Don't, please don't try to spray this inside. You need a well-ventilated area when you're working with these paints because the fumes go everywhere. So it's best to be outside. Secondly, make sure you have like some tissue or something to kind of clean these as you're going because this one kept getting jammed um, and it wouldn't spray when I needed it to because this project you have to do quickly when you're working with the power wash. The power wash, guys, don't order this from Amazon if you don't have to. Amazon is going to rip you off. They're going to charge you like $13 or $14 for this. Do not order this off of Amazon. I got this at Walmart for $5. It was $4 and some change. So try Walmart, but it's done. Power wash. And basically what you do is, and you see it in the video, but sometimes it's kind of a little bit off camera. What you're going to do is if you want this part um, not to color gold, then you spray this. The top part that you don't want gold, you spray it with the power wash. You get it all around there. And after you get the, a nice coat of the power wash on, then you go ahead and spray paint the bottom um, gold or metallic. I keep saying gold, but metallic. And then what you're going to end up with is where that's how you get these little edges that don't look finished because that's where power wash was. And so the power wash prevents the um, paint from being able to get there. Okay. So that's why you see black like that in between there because that's where the power wash was but you do have to work quickly so after you put the power wash you spray paint this metallic then you're going to take your water hose i didn't have a water hose i highly recommend you do this outside i highly recommend the water hose um, but i just used a cup and a bowl a cup of water and i poured it on to get it off now one of the things i did notice is that and i went and fixed it because i really didn't like it i said i didn't like it on camera then i said i did like it it was confucius <laughs> but what I did is when I went in to wash it off, I noticed that the vine, uh, the metallic paint was running down onto the black and it kind of gave it a vintage look. And I thought I liked it at first. And I was like, no, I didn't paint this black so that it would have the, the, the metallic running all over it. So I went in, as you can see, I went in and I gave it another coat of the black paint. I did this and I shouldn't have to do that but I didn't have a water hose so those are some things to be careful of if you do start to do this project I think overall it's really great um it's a great, great project um I just don't I haven't been using epoxy in a while so it's kind of like oh it's taking so long but this kit as you saw in the beginning is going to come in a box it has a ribbon on the front and I'm going to be packaging this back in here. And then it has two straws for your wine glasses. But I, again, I got this set from the Stainless Depot for $18. I ordered it. Let's say I ordered it on um, Saturday. I got it before Thursday. That's just how quick they were. Now, I don't know if it's because where I'm located, because I don't know where Stainless Depot is. But every time I've ordered from them, with the exception of the first time, but the, the last two times I've ordered from them, it came really quickly. And those times I was sending them, I think one was to Virginia and I don't think I would have Might have been California. I don't know. I don't know. I'm old. Um, but um, after I did the project, one of the things that I realized is that I did have a color. Let me see here. Hold on one second. I got some more. that I thought that would have been a little bit closer. You know, this one right here, I thought might have been a little bit closer or better to use than this color. Um, but all in all, I still like it. So I'm happy with the end result, but that's one of the other colors that came in that package that was three different colors. Um, so those are some things that I wanted to finish off this video saying is to give you all the stuff that I use, tell you everything that I used, where I got everything from. I'll also put it in the description. I'll link the Stainless Depot in there. I don't get any type of breaks or anything like that or discounts if you order anything. So it's clearly based off of my own experience with them. And then I've shown you 
all the products that I've used. Again, do not purchase that power wash off of <laughs> off of the Amazon website because I was going to because I tried to order from Walmart and then they canceled my order. So I'm like, well, maybe they don't have it in the store, but I think they were just too lazy to go back and get one product for me. And so um, I went to Walmart and they had them all stacked you know, in the store. So there, there was no reason for them to um, cancel my order other than pure laziness. Um, but like I said, I got the power wash at Walmart for $4.94. So if you want to do this project, it doesn't have to be this one, but if you want to use the power wash with painting, then that is one way that you can do it. I would highly recommend it, guys. I think it's absolutely a great project. It's just time consuming. Okay, but you guys can see, I don't know how many outfits I wore <laughs> for the taping of this tutorial, but I wanted to be very clear on the process because I know that there are sometimes I had to spray and I was off camera. So I wanted to make sure that you're completely clear on the process. And if there's anything that you still don't understand or couldn't see or understand what I did, then please hit me in the comments. And you can al always email me, guys. Anyone that's ever emailed me knows that I will respond just like I do in the comments. So you can contact me via the comments or you can contact me at candors48 at gmail.com. Um, and then the epoxy that I used is just the uh, Amazing Clear Cast. Like I said, I get this at Hobby Lobby for $23.99. And they always say it's on sale, but I'm telling you, I've been shopping at Hobby Lobby for a long time. It's always $23.99. And this is the 16 ounce. If you go to Michael's, you're going to get the smaller uh, container and it's almost 30 bucks in there unless they've come down on the price. But I would see the price in there and just go, mm -mm, I'm going to Hobby Lobby, which I need to do they're closed today because I need some more of this. But um, the safety the safety mask you saw me wear where I was looking like a monster. Um, that I also ordered off of Amazon. It comes with the safety shields. I just didn't want to fully mask up with everything. But I highly recommend you use those things when you're working with epoxy. Normally, I don't even tell you how to mix it because I don't want that responsibility on my head because epoxy can be dangerous with breathing, breathing it in. I mean, cause you all kinds of problems. So be safe when you use it. Make sure you're wearing gloves. And then the spinner I also got off of Amazon. It worked perfectly. I left it on um, last night to finish spinning this, to finish spinning. And, you know, it's in my room. This is my bedroom. You guys can't tell. But this is my bedroom. And it is quiet. Like, I didn't hear a peep. There were times that I would lift up and be like, let me make sure it hasn't, hasn't fallen or, you know, stop working or whatever. And it was still spinning the whole time. So um, I just wanted to come on, but I did get this off Amazon. I'll link this where I got it, um, the vendor that I got it from on Amazon as well. I put that in there and it was very inexpensive. My manager gave me a Amazon gift card for Christmas and I used it to purchase this and one other thing. So very cheap. I'm going to say cost efficient because that sounds nicer, right? Cost efficient. And uh, I'll link this one in there as well. But like I said, if there's any part of the video that wasn't clear because I had to go through several phases to get the entire process done, um, because it's not like you can do it all in just one sitting. You know, I had to move around and do everything. All of the decals I printed myself and made myself in Cricut Design Space using my Cricut Maker. So I had my Cricut Maker to cut out all of my decals for me, the his, the hers, and the black love, and then the little frame. I had Cricut Design Space. I designed those in Cricut Design Space and then had um, the Cricut Maker to cut them out for me. For the vinyl that I used, guys, um, the setting that I used in Cricut Design Space was um, premium metallic vinyl i think that's what it was premium premium metallic vinyl i didn't use any default pressure or anything i mean i didn't use uh um more pressure i left it on default and one of the things i want to tell you guys is when you can't see because it's hard to see where the cuts are in this vinyl and what i do is i just take my light and shine it on it and you can see it clear as day so if you have like a little light or something that you can shine on the vinyl um, even with the glitter vinyl, you can see it much better once you put it up under that light. And that's what I had to do with this because it was very hard to see where the letters were. And I don't want to waste my vinyl by, you know, cutting big pieces. So put it up under the light, 
it'll show you exactly where your letters are. So you'll know where to put. So I wanted to put that out there. I thought that it would be easier at the end of my videos if I could give you some pointers and things to do and not to do along the process. And I highly recommend guys, before you start doing any project that I'm showing you how to do, watch the entire video first. That way you'll know if there was anything I changed because in this video, you will notice that I initially spray painted this black and then I had um, gold right or the metallic right here. And that wasn't what I wanted. And I realized it was too late. But I did it wrong. So in the video, you're going to see this with the metallic here. And this was black and this was black. But what I did is I went back in and I spray painted this black and then I put the metallic, as you can see, on the bottom and the top because I wanted the decal to be able to fit on the black and not on the metallic because you wouldn't have been able to see it as well, okay? So always watch the video all the way through um, just in case something changed. Um, I did try to put some text in there to kind of help you out, you know, um, since this process was so long. <laughs> oh, Lord Jesus. Um, but it was a very lengthy process, but I wanted to make sure that I give you everything that you need to know about this project. And for those of you that um, are always looking at my nails because I do my own nails, um, this is acrylic um, on my nails, and this is the first week with me having acrylic on my nails, and they survived. <laughs> I didn't lose any nails, break any nails, chip any nails, anything. They survived, so I'm totally happy about that because I have been through the ringer since last Monday with these nails with the projects I've been working on. Um, the last thing I'll tell you is that um, if you don't have any, guys, invest in some odorless mineral oil or mineral spirits. Because when you get paint, when you get your acrylic paints or your um, your spray paints, if you get them on the lip of your glass, then you can actually put a little bit of this on a paper towel or a rag and it will lift it up right off for you, okay? Don't try to take a knife because you don't want to scratch up the metal on here because somebody's going to put their mouth on there and they could cut themselves. So... Um, it's better to use something that, you know, you can wash this. I wouldn't wash this for a couple of days, guys. Anytime you're using acrylic, you really need to let it cure, you know, longer than the 24 hours if you can. Um, but I'm just going to let these sit up and finish during their thing. Um, you can see they're dry enough for me to teach. Um, but I do highly recommend purchasing or investing in some mineral spirits, and it is odorless. This I have had for like two or three years. And you can see I still have, you know, a little bit left in there, but it goes a long way. And what else? I think that's it, guys. I just wanted to make sure I cover everything because this video was so long. Um, but I wanted you to see the entire process all the way through. Um, there were times that I've decided, you know, I want to shorten this up and I'll just put some pictures. But sometimes, you know, pictures don't convey the message. So I left the videos as they were and tried to put some text in there to help you out. And then, you know, I did this at the end to help you to realize it is a lengthy process. <laughs> and um, let's see it. If you have access to a yard and you can do it outside, please, please, please do it outside with a water hose because then you can spray this on and rinse it off, you know, better than having it to, you know, got to pick up the cup, pour it on and make sure you, it's just too much with that. But I survived. Okay. And in the end, I am happy with the finished pro project uh, or product. So I just wanted to come on and convey that message and go ahead and wrap this video up and seal this baby with a kiss. All right, guys, that's it. Again, if there's anything I missed, anything you didn't understand, please hit me in the comments or email me at candors48 at gmail.com. And if you're in my Facebook group, a member of my Facebook group, Candoris is Cricket and Creative crafters then thank you guys so much for the support if you would like to join the group then just send me a facebook group request to candoris's cricket and creative crafters and i will go ahead and add you it won't take days normally just like that and um and if you like my method of teaching i have so many tutorials on my channel guys that will help you for those that still have your cricket or your silhouette in the box I have so many crafting tutorials to help you to start from the beginning, you know, because I know you're nervous. I know you're scared because I know I was, um, but I, I was on it. 
<laughs> I got my I got my cricket maker and I was on it. It didn't sit in the box. I was so excited and I messed up a lot of stuff. <laughs> but that's how I learned. And that's why I'm here trying to help you out. So, you know, get you comfortable so that you can start crafting and being great at it as well. Not that I'm great. Yeah, I saw that video. <laughs> Anyway, guys, thank you so much for subscribing to my YouTube channel. And if you're not subscribed and you like my method of teaching, then please like, share, and subscribe. Please tell others about my channel as well. And also tell others about my Facebook group um, so that we can continue to grow together. One of the things you're going to learn about me is education comes first. So I'm not just on here crafting something. A lot of my group members get excited because they know when I post pictures in the group, it's probably a tutorial telling them how exactly how I did whatever I posted in the group. So they don't, my group is not filled with how do you do this and what did you do and what products did you use because they know that they can come to my channel and get the tutorial. Not a lot of groups will do that. Some groups, you know, people post stuff and you ask questions and it. Did y'all hear that pin drop? Oh, I'm just kidding. But anyway. All right, guys, that's my story. I'm sticking to it. And you know my motto is each one reach one so that each one can teach one. And thank you guys for the support on my YouTube channel and my Facebook group. And I'm going to continue to get better so I can help you to get better as well. Have a good day. Bye.